Hello, I'm Minister Mark Allen of FHL Food of Life. Welcome to FHL of the Word Fellowship. Today the, uh, we'll be talking about giving it up to Jesus. And the uh, scripture will come from Luke 14, 33. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity, and I ask somebody's heart is opened up to the Word. In your son Jesus' name, amen. So here in uh, Luke 14, Jesus Christ is <clears throat> telling his uh, disciples uh, about the cost of being a disciple and what that means. And, and, and uh, here he tells them that they're going to have to give up everything. And giving up everything... Really what Jesus Christ wants, he wants that, that one thing that is, that is uh, important, that, that one thing that, that, that you hold over everything else. And Jesus Christ needs you to give that up for him. Because we have to learn to put Jesus Christ first in our life. And, and, not, and, and in, in your heart and in your life. And so now we move up here to... Uh, Luke 14, 25. A large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, If you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else by comparison. Your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost. Or who will begin construction on a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money. And then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. Or, what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether his army of 10,000 could defeat the army of 20,000 soldiers marching against him. And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far away. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. So I just want to talk about a lot of people can't convert. They can't complete the conversion being a Christian, and one of the reasons is because they never count the cost of becoming a Christian. They know, they don't they don't uh, they don't calculate what that means to them and their lives, and that's what Jesus Christ taught telling his disciples to do. Because if you don't do that, you'll go through the process of giving yourself to Jesus Christ and and, and announcing that you're a Christian, but then. When hard times come, when you see how uh, situations arrive, and how people start treating you, and then you didn't count that cost. You didn't know it was going to be this hard, and you'll fall, you'll fall, you'll fall back. You'll never develop and grow as a Christian because you never thought about, wow, I need to really think about the decision I'm making. I need to say, can I give up smoking? Can I give up going out? Can I give up? All these things, can I give up this type of music? Can I give up cursing? Just simple things every day. You know, can I forgive? Can I do all of these things? Count the cost. Because if you don't, uh, you'll trip up on your own self. Because once you do start growing as a Christian, uh, once you start getting attacked, and if you're not already made up, if you haven't already made up your mind that you're going to uh, follow through with it, once you start coming under these attacks, uh, you're going to fold under the pressure. Right. Then you'll never right. grow. You'll never develop. See, Jesus Christ, he wasn't into forcing people to follow him or forcing people to serve him or any of those things. He always was telling them to think about it. Understand what you're doing. Understand what this means. Just don't say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow you because you're doing miracles. But understand right. what this means. Apply to yourself. Apply the word to yourself. So you can see, wow, can I really handle this? Am I really ready to, to follow Jesus Christ? 
Am I serious enough to give up what I need to give up? All right. Have, you know, have I accounted the cost, even for myself, when I became a Christian, the first thing I had to give up was my music. That was my love, and that's what I loved doing. And that's what I had to give up instantly. I already knew in my heart that I can't be a Christian and continue to produce this kind of music. I have to give it up. And so I gave it up. For other people, it's all types of things. It might be just something simple like cursing. <laughs> uh, you know, some people have a problem with cursing. Not that they curse people out, just they just curse in general. Now, a change of language. So when you become a Christian, now you got to focus on changing my language. Not that you were always disrespectful towards other people with your language. It's just a change of your language in general. Because as a Christian, you have to understand when you speak, you're, you're speaking as a representative of Jesus Christ. So you have to keep that in mind. You know, when we, when we say things, we're doing it as a representative of God, Jesus. Yeah. You've got to keep that in mind. So we just have to change how we, how we would talk to somebody, how we would respond to somebody. Yeah. And, and the words we say. And that, that would be another example of having to give up something. And for other people, it's just habits. You know, self-control has to do... Self-control is the key to being able to give up habits. So self-control is a, is a fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's the key to giving up habits. So if you don't have self-control, you won't be able to stop doing anything that you're trying to stop doing. You'll just keep on falling back, keep on doing it. And so you won't be able to give up anything. And that's always, you know, that's always a red flag that I use for myself is if I realize that it's something that I've been trying to do that I have enough to stop doing. And I always have to reevaluate where am I at with God because I recognize that self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. If I'm not able to exercise self-control, that means the Spirit of God is not working fully in me, that something's wrong with me, on the inside of me, that I need to look at myself and say, now, why can't I give up this, you know, why am I so anxious and impulsive? Why come I can't give up this? Why come I can't stick to a simple routine of, you know, doing 25 push-ups? Just little simple stuff, you know. And self-control is something well. that you have to uh, look at and say, okay, if I'm walking in Christ, I would have self-control to give up the things I need to give up. So if I'm not able to have self-control, that means that I need to reevaluate my spiritual walk and find out where I'm off track at so I'll be able to exercise my self-control to give these things up for Jesus Christ. Because when you become a Christian, we all have the best of intentions. But if you don't think about the cost, you'd be like, wow, it's hard. It's hard. You know, the, the best intentions in the world still won't change the fact that when you become a Christian, the world is against you all of a sudden. And it's hard. Little things that you used to be able to do, you can't do. It's not about whether or not those little things are hurting other people or hurting yourself. It's just that these little things are the things that are wrong in the eyes of God. So you can't do it. When you look at that type of battle, it's a spiritual war. So when you look at the spiritual aspect of it, it's always a spiritual war. It's always about the spirit of the world is against the spirit of Christ. And when you look at it like that, it's you versus, versus Satan, basically. It's never about you and people. And you have to think about that. Because what you're doing, if you're smoking a cigarette, you're not necessarily hurting anybody else. You're hurting your own body. But at the same time, most of the time when you're smoking, it's because you're worried about something. You're anxious about something. Something's upset you. And when you look at it from that aspect, now if you look at the spiritual side of it. Uh, I'm not supposed to be worrying about something where I have to go smoke because I'm supposed to have faith in God that he has control over my situation. And so I shouldn't be getting upset going out having to have a cigarette. I should have faith. And because of my faith, I should be able to say, Okay, I'm not going to go smoke. That's exercising self-control and just say it's in God's hand and just move on. And once you get to that point, you can recognize yourself doing that on the inside. That's a real good feeling to have when you understand that. that you, can, you can give up something like that and say, I can give this up to God. Because you know, giving up stuff doesn't always mean uh, dropping a habit. Sometimes it means giving a problem or a situation to God. It's just worrying just something that's on your heart that's heavy that you always find yourself thinking about and then you can give that to God. 
And that's another example of giving up something for God. You know, a lot of people like to say the things you have to give up for God are always pleasurable. But that's not true. God's not saying that you can't have pleasure in your life. God wants you to be happy. God, he, he wants those things for you. But God doesn't want uh, our pleasures to be pleasures of sin. And God doesn't want our pleasures to become gods in our sight to where we put our pleasures above him. Anytime you find yourself loving or caring about somebody more than you do about pleasing God, yeah. then, then you're living in sin, and that will be a problem. So then you have to give up that. Like for me, my music would have been that. That would have been something that I love more than I would wanted to do that music more than I wanted to please God. So when I did make the choice to become a Christian, then I had to give up my music. If I wouldn't have gave up my music, I wouldn't be able to live as a Christian. And then if we go to verse 34, <clears throat> salt is good for seasoning, but it loses its flavor. How do you make, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? Flavorless salt is good neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So right here, what Jesus Christ is saying, as Christians, we are the salt of the earth. So we are the flavor of the earth. We're, and the word of, we're the light of the earth. So we're the light in the darkness. But how can we be that salt if we start off as that flavor, but then since we didn't count the cost, our flavor goes stale. So now we're not flavorable. We're not producing the fruit we're supposed to produce. And so what good, what good can we be? You know, can we be salty again? You know, will we gain that back? And then, you know, flavorless salt. I would, I would say flavorless salt. That's like a Christian who's not producing fruit. Doesn't, it doesn't do the body of Christ any good. Okay. If you're a flavorless salt, that means that you're not producing any fruit. You're a Christian who doesn't produce fruit. So what good are you? What are you doing? And, and that's, that's the point Jesus Christ is trying to say, you know. That's not good to anybody. And anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Jesus always spoke to the crowds and to the people in parables, stories, because it was already that some people would understand what he was saying. Some people's hearts would be too hardened so they wouldn't understand what he was saying. And for those of people that understood what he was saying, he was saying, if you understand it, you need to listen to it, hear it, apply it to yourself. Don't just understand it and don't do anything with it. You know, understand it, listen, hear, and then you'll be blessed if you apply it to yourself. So the question I want you to ask yourself, you know, what are those things that you still are holding on to that you, that you know that you need to give up to God? And then how are you going to do that? How are you going to give up what you need to give up? All right, what, what steps are you going to take? And one of the steps you can take is whenever that situation comes up, uh, pause, uh, breathe, and just and just uh, uh, tell God that you know He has it, and then and then just let let it go. Uh, and always do that. If you ever do it a thousand times in a day, pause and just say, God, I know you got this. God, I know you got this. You know, and if, if it's a habit that you're dealing with, like drinking or smoking, uh, start off with the same. The same thing. If you've got the urge to go for smoke, pause, say, wait a minute. Satan is a lie. God, you got this. I don't need to go smoke. And once you start doing that, it'll feel good after a while. You can recognize that. Uh, I would like to also encourage you to uh, think about self-control because I've been studying a lot on self-control because a lot of people don't talk about it, but it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if you think about it, self-control, if a person who doesn't have control you know, if they, you don't have self-control, that means that you don't have control over anything that's going on in your life. And that you're, you're under the influence of anybody. You're at the mercy of anybody. And, and you're not even equipped to handle the attacks that, that's going to come towards you. You're basically out there and you're, and you're all alone and, and, and you don't have any control over nothing that's going on. That's really a plan for a disaster and a spiritual meltdown. I would like to uh, leave you with just uh, with the, the verse we started with, 
So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. A lot of people get scared about that. So they say, well, everything I own. But then you have to think about it. What do you own? When you were born, you came here with nothing. And when you leave here, you're not going to have anything. So really, you don't own anything. And the things that you're holding on to, that you think you're on, that you own, now that, that's why that's sin. Because you don't own it. The fact you think you own it means you're alive. And on top of that, you're just not even understanding that it could be taken from you at any minute. It's not important. Yes. The only thing that will last are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the things from God. You can see it. The most um, right now, the pop, the most popular writers and authors in the world today are the writers and authors of the Bible. The Bible is the most popular book. It will always be. It's the most. The, it sold the most copies. It lasts forever. The Word of God is eternal. When we leave here, the Word of God will still be right there. And that's not going to change. And we don't own the Bible. So when you think about that, if the Bible is the only thing that's going to last, is the Word of God, and we don't own it, what do you own? You don't own anything. But yet you can't even give up the things that you think you own. So that shows that you have a problem. And that's why Jesus Christ says that. You know, you can't even follow God if you're not trying to give up what you own. Because to begin with, you don't own nothing. If you won't give up nothing for God, you don't deserve to be in the kingdom. So I want to leave you with faith, hope, and love. I hope that somebody's heart can apply this to their life. Father God, I thank you for this word. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's a good word.